Hello, friends of the internet. My name is Austin Belzer. I am the founder and editor of Austin B Media. And welcome to my review of The Boys Season 3. Now, for those who aren't familiar, let me get you caught up on my opinion of The Boys. So, I liked The Boys Season 1. It was a gritty and raw superhero show that proved, hey, you don't have to be making jokes every five seconds to make a, a good superhero show. Um, it's something I think that the Disney Plus shows actually have learned from. Um, and then um, season two came by and it was okay. Uh, there were forgettable things. You know, it's like Daredevil season three. It just, it was overwrite. Uh, it, it was just had too much stuff with um, Congress and bureaucracy to really catch my attention for most of the season. Um, and then season three has come around, which um, is much more, season three is much more about a theme. Uh, it centers everything in a theme for each character. It's each character's wrestling with their upbringing, their, uh, lo uh, their views of love and the ideas of monsters and are we monsters? Um, so specifically, um, some things I've picked up on the big themes of were a Butcher's fight for Ryan and uh, his upbringing. Oh, and by the way, there will be a few spoilers, um, but only spoilers that exist to make my review um, make sense. Um, so that's why I waited so long. Um, so yeah, so the Butcher's fight for Ryan and his upbringing to fight for Annie and his upbringing with his, uh, growing up with his father with the pizza rolls. Um, Homelander's fight for love. Annie's fight for Huey, uh, which is also a fight for love. Queen's, uh, Queen Maeve's, uh, team up with the boys. Ace, Ace Rain's fight for his community. Mother, Mil Mother's Milk fight for his daughter uh, and his past with Soldier Boy and why uh, his influence on his daughter and, and the influence Todd has on his daughter, uh, Janice. Uh, the deep sucking up to Homelander and literally sucking, uh, both figuratively and literally. Um, Frenchie's fight against his past, Nico seeing himself as a monster, Ashley's fight to keep bought in one piece after Homelander does what he does. Uh, Victorious Newman's fight to get to the White House, which we'll talk about later on, uh, and Soldier Boy's fight against his past, specifically his fight against Payback. So, wh what did I think of the story? I thought centering around these themes and so many common themes with these characters made it a lot more palatable to watch this season and made it more, much more. Uh, it made it easier to follow because when you center a lot of the characters' ideals and w the struggles they're going through uh, around similar topics, what I think happens is it just makes the story more cohesive. Uh, specifically, all of these characters are fighting against their past in one way or another. Janiko, her fight against her, uh, her monster self, as she would put it, um, is her past. She feels like she is a monster. Uh, past, present, and maybe future. Um, and she doesn't want to be that. And, you know, she's dealing with um, some of the stuff from season two where her, her brother and her didn't ha get to have a childhood. Um, which I th thought was really interesting. Um, and I, I think she's Really, Karen Fukuhara, uh, her acting is really some of the best in the series uh, so far because she's not saying words like I'm saying right now. She's doing all of this in sign language, in her own form of sign language, mind you. This isn't American sign language. This is a sign language that Frenchie and her made up together. And speaking of Frenchie, um, he gets a lot more to do this season, too, because he's... Um, he has to deal with uh, Nina, little Nina, um, and just how much does someone control him? Is Butcher controlling him? 
Um, and just all these philosophical ideas made it really much more interesting to watch than if Frenchie was just going off saying, hey, I found this compound that wipes out the superheroes. Uh, it, it's much more interesting. There's a fight for his soul and a lot of it. Um, and, and the actor's name is Homer Capone. Um, and I, I, one little touch I liked is sometimes he will not look at Kamiko and give her sign language. He, like he already knows what she's saying um, out of the corner of his eye. That that I just thought that was really that was really lovely. I thought, but um, yeah. Um, let's see. What else do I want to get into? Um, Mother's Milk gets a lot more to do. Um, his fight against Soldier Boy, while I think, um, while I think there there was more they could have done with it, um, I I don't think I would have changed any of it. I I think by the time you get to the big fight in Bot Tower uh, at the end of the se uh, season, uh, I think it makes sense that oh we're gonna. We're not going to have this fight at Herogasm because that's not what it's about. Um, and I'll talk about Herogasm here in a bit. Um, because it just makes more sense to have that climactic battle because it's really what the whole se season is leading on to. And he gets to have this whole idea of generational trauma um, is coming up more and more in media. And I like that they're actually addressing what made. Um, Mother's Milk want to join the boys. What is his experience with a suit? Um, and I, I, I just, it's a shame Laz Alonzo, um, let's focus here for a second. Uh, thank you, camera. Um, I, I, I just really appreciate that they gave him more to do. And, in this, and made it about not just a, a thin saying like, oh, he just hit the wrong family. It's like, no, Soldier Boy was known to be racist. Soldier Boy was known to target um, minorities. And in that same vein, I think, um, I, I forget the actor's name. Let me look it up real quick. Um, the person who plays A-Train, uh, let's see, A-Train, 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 Jesse T. Usher also gets a bit more to do in that same sector, uh, like the A-Train to Africa. Oh, uh, goodness. That was a bit cringy. Um, but I liked how they actually used race as something that made these two characters different and how they went about um, using their platforms. Um, take down the soup that hurt them the most. I, I thought that was really interesting. Um, especially A-Train. The whole metaphor of getting Blue Hawk's heart is going to be really interesting going into season four because he has now become a part of the sy system he has helped try to destroy. Um, another big part of uh, season three is obviously Homelander. Uh, Anthony Starr is as, as great as as terrifying as ever, really. Um, I mean, I know there's a meme going out there where he's just standing outside the farm, going, "Ooh, you know." Um, and um, I think it they obviously latch on to some Trumpisms, uh, especially at the end of season three. Um, I, I didn't care for that as much, but I do like how much they went into. Oh, this is actually how Homelander would act if all of a sudden the public was on his side for one reason or another. Um, and I liked how intricately they played it with Todd, uh, that it wasn't just so one note with Todd that it was just, oh, well, I like Homelander because of this thing. No, he likes Homelander because. X, Y, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, H, uh, I, J, K, L, and then O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. You get the point. Um, it's just, it's not one thing. It's the collective, uh, which makes the end of season three 
really Todd is the villain of season three, uh, if I had to say so. And I really liked um, what, let's see, Matthew Gorman is his name, uh, had to do there because his performance is just, it's as terrifying as Homelander's is, really, because you see how easily someone is swayed um, to become radicalized. And we saw a bit of this in season two, but not as, a, not as intensely. Um, but speaking of radicalization, uh, Jack Quaid is really coming into his own in season three. I know he had, I think he filmed Scream in between this, uh, which he's also good in, and you should see on Paramount Plus, uh, he's really good in that. Um, and I think that helped him. Uh, going into a movie helped him with season three because he's nuanced in this season. He's not just the screaming out of his mind. Huey. We actually get a lot more into his psyche this season where he's he feels helpless a lot of a lot of the season and I like that they that um Eric Kripke, the showrunner, dived and Jack Quaid dived real deep into that by giving him compound uh B twenty four. I guess I think it's just called B twenty four actually. Temp V. Uh whatever that you call it. Um and showing the darker side of him, showing what he would become if left unchecked by Annie and Butcher. And I, I it was terrifying. Um, and I'm sure, um, I, I can't wait to see what he does in season four, how he finds other ways to help Annie. Because, and I liked that they gave, that they set him up to fail. Uh, because that's always been Huey's thing. He's set up to fail, and he's now reckoning with and I thought that was so, so cool. Um, speaking of a reckoning, uh, Carl Urban is huge highlight of the season. Um, it, the way he wrestles with B24 and his upbringing, I think, is really well done. I, I, I just, the whole flashback uh, sequence with, in that one episode, I'm, I, I think it's episode seven, A Candle Light to Light You Home, uh, is, I think, really gets to the heart of who Butcher is. And I think that's the whole season is gets to the heart of uh, who Butcher is um, and why he uses Soldier Boy, uh, Jensen Ackles, to, as a weapon and why he uses everyone around him as a weapon to, to the ends justify the means for him. Um, but and no matter the cost, he'll pay this price. Um, and we'll see that in season four. I'll, I'll, I'll be very interested to see what they do with them. Um, and speaking of Jensen Ackles, um, I was really grateful it wasn't just Captain America, but he's an asshole. It was Captain America, but oh, this is what actually would happen if Captain America came out of the ice in the 2020s, or, or I guess... 2010s, like he would have some thoughts about society, and his best friend would not be the Falcon. I'll just say that. Um, I, I I liked what they did with him here, um, and they made him an asshole, but a likable asshole. And that's what's so important is you have to like you have to like the asshole, which I feel like if taken out of context. Hmm, that's going to be interesting, but uh, but yeah, I, I I think the direction by Eric Kripke, uh, it, it's one of the best seasons yet. Um, I've seen it twice now. Um, I saw it once without the VFX and one with the VFX. Um, I saw this like two or three months ago without the VFX, and now I've seen it with the VFX. So it's kind of an interesting uh, comparison. But I really liked uh, the Boys season three. I think it's. One of the best seasons of superhero TV shows, even surpassing Miss Marvel and WandaVision, even though those are much more, um, those are toned down. Uh, this is more toned up. I just really loved all of it. So what were your thoughts? On, oh, by the way, uh, five out of five stars. Uh, I really loved it that much. Um, 
But what were your thoughts on The Boys Season 3? I'd love to get your thoughts. Um, but until next time, that was my review of The Boys Season 3. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks so much. And it sounds like it's lunchtime. Bye-bye. Thank you.